Welcome CSC 102 students to EX02 and this is going to be temps. We're going to call this temps and basically this is an idea I got for an exercise just by looking at the weather and they have this little chart down at the bottom. This is WFMZ.com and down at the bottom they have this little chart uh, for weather where they have kind of the 10 day weather of the highs and lows. Now they have a low chart on here and they have highs. They don't have the the lows actually shown but we're gonna put them in there we're gonna do something like this just to get the feel of doing this in Excel and making a chart even doing this little gradient the way they're doing it doing the colors all this kind of thing it's pretty easy to do but what we're gonna to need to do is put in the data first and obviously th the weather changes every single day so whether you're doing it in the winter or summer whatever I'm gonna use it based on whatever today's date is today's um, Saturday the third and just September 3rd so we're gonna use the 10 days basically goes Saturday through Monday are the 10 days so we're gonna use that and I'm gonna show you how in Excel we can kind of make a series of things to make it a little bit easier of making repetitive content in the cells so we're gonna do that and then we're actually gonna make a chart so we're gonna start this from scratch let me show you a sample this one is basically gonna have a day a date which is the number date and then a high and low for each day and it's, there's gonna be 10 of these this one we did in the past started with Monday because I think we did it on a Monday so we're gonna to have to start this you know this will change whenever you do the exercise unfortunately so but we'll do it however the WFMZ is for that particular day so if it's I'm doing it on a Saturday I'm gonna stick with Saturday right now because that way I could follow what's what's in there anyway we're gonna make a new file so we're gonna go file new and we're just going to do a blank workbook and there's going to be nothing here to start and under your instructions in a1 we're just going to put we're just going to type temp in here and you can type it right in here and i'm just going to type temp and i'll put fahrenheit in parentheses because that's the way it has it in there so that's just almost going to be our title that's going to be on here and again if you need to go back and look at the sample or look you know here's the sample again see we're doing temp then we're gonna do day date high low and then we're gonna put this information in here so we're gonna do this part first then we're gonna make a chart from that data so going back to to my blank one I'm gonna go here and in cells a, a2 b2 c2 and d2 we're gonna put day and then you can just hit tab and I'm gonna put date and then I'm gonna put high and then low and those are going to be kind of our column headings that are going to be in there and then for the day um, I guess I'll start with Saturday I'll do that and that may change on your instructions whatever day you start with is fine and then the date now the date I'm gonna go in here they don't have an insert date in Excel what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna put Saturday I'm gonna type out the full date Saturday with a comma um, September third and I'm gonna put 2016 and I may not even need the Saturday in here I may just just do that I'm gonna put that in there and I'm gonna hit return once I put it in there so and what it does already it recognizes that it's a date and it tries to format it like a date and when it's in here what you could do is you could even go to your number formatting in here and choose you could go here and choose date and if you open this up you have more options of date so I think we're going to do, I guess, just this uh, date where it actually has. It doesn't actually show the day in there. If you, if you notice, it doesn't show the date. It just abbreviates the month. So um, unlike the sample that we see on the web, it doesn't show the day, but we could do something different. But we're just going to do, this has an example. It says 14-March. That doesn't mean it's going to use March. It's going to do 3-September. So I'm going to select that one. And that's just a way of formatting that cell so the date shows up a little bit differently. And then what I'm going to do to both of these, I'm going to first do this one, and I'm going to drag the bottom here of Saturday and I'm not sure if it'll go in the next, let's see if we, if we drag the next one. It does Sunday. And it actually knows that there's a series. So I'm going to drag this all the way down to 12 because I think we want to go to Monday. And you can even see that Monday showing up there. So it goes Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all the way back to Monday again. It does the 10 days. And you could stretch this out a little bit. And then for this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag down all the way. And it goes all the way to the 12th. And that's actually what it did on here it went Saturday the 3rd to Monday the 12th so by creating a series in Excel 
it recognizes certain certain content in there. Excel is very smart. It recognizes certain content and it tries to make a series or tries to repeat things. Now the highs and lows, we have to type this in. We can't do a series of these because they're all kind of random. So I'm going to type these in. So uh, the first one that I'm going to put in, I think, just judging it was 78 on today, which is a Saturday, and the low, I think it was saying it was 60. So I'm going to have to put all these in manually. So let me pause. Okay, here's my last number I just put in here. So everything's formatted nicely. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to center these. So I'm going to highlight these. Cell well, actually, I should look at my... What you're going to do is just kind of make it look nice. You're going to, I'm going to center these on top. I'm going to center these. So you can highlight any cells that you want the content center. Just center them. These don't have to be centered. They look better. If you centered these, if you actually highlighted these and centered them, they would be hard to read. They actually would look better on the left side there because they start on the left but these look better centered and then also remember for this one you could do a merge and center you could hit the merge and center button I'll have to put that on your instruction so you do that and then if you wanted to format things so they look nice you know you could give I'm gonna make this white and use the paint bucket to give a background color maybe I'll make it blue um, you can make it bold you could even make it bigger if you want so I'll make a nice big you know heading there this stuff could, you know, maybe be a background of gray. So, however you'd want to do this kind of stuff, it's not that, not that big of an issue. You could, you could make it look nice. One of the other ones down here, I'll just look at this one. You know, they use kind of a, you know, a salmon kind of color for alternating things. So that looks nice too. So wh whatever you want to do, you you don't have to follow exactly a, a certain pattern for that. Just make it look nice. So maybe I'll highlight. Now, one thing just to be note, if you highlight just the numbers here, it's going to make a color go all the way across. And you don't necessarily want to do that, so you might have to highlight these four cells and then and then hold control and highlight alternating cells again. And remember, they look kind of gray when you're highlighting them, but they won't be gray. So I'm going to highlight these by holding control, and they're just highlighted now. And then I'm going to use my paint bucket, and I'll just give like a nice kind of pale orange color. That looks fine. So, so that's fine for now. So it just kind of breaks it up a little bit. If you wanted to make these things up at the top bold, make them stand out a little bit, you know, that's fine. So that's basically our data for our temps, and we're just going to make a chart from that data. And I think we'll take a break here, and we'll work on our chart for part two of the video.